<clears throat> Hello, in this video we're going to talk about using U substitution to integrate uh, functions uh, which uh, have an inside portion, uh, similar to those that you differentiate with the chain rule. Uh, let's start out with something really simple. Integral of cosine uh, of 5x. Um, so if you were integrating cosine, you would just get sine and plus c. Um, here, however, we have a 5 in the middle of things, um, so we need to, to deal with that. Since this is an antiderivative, um, we can probably assume that when you took the derivative to get this, there was some sort of chain rule involved, and, and so we're just kind of uh, loosely thinking about it. We're undoing the chain rule. Uh, we're going to start out by defining a u. I'm going to call that the inside part 5x. Uh, oftentimes, u is really obvious as far as what you should pick to be u, but not always. Um, so we're going to start out, we're going to do cosine of u, um, but it doesn't make sense to still have dx, so you have to take the derivative of both sides here. The derivative of u is du. The derivative of 5x is 5dx. You can divide out your 5 and see that dx is du over 5, and that now can become one-fifth on the outside. From our rules of exponents, you can take a constant out if you want to. Um, so now we just have one-fifth times the integral of cosine u, just sine u, plus c. <clears throat> and last, all you do is you re go back to the uh, 5x. So that is a very simple u substitution style uh, problem. Um, so the derivative of 5x was 5. If that is the case, you have a really nice situation where the kind of the extra portion just comes out. It's a constant. Uh, it doesn't always work out like that. So let's look at another example. Uh, let's see here. We'll stick with cosine and do something like this. x times cosine of x squared. Again, we have a definite u uh, candidate. The inside part is x squared. Um, the derivative of u is du, and the derivative of x squared is 2x dx. Uh, we're going to uh, divide by 2x. So you get dx is d over 2x. Um, so we're going to start doing my substitution. x times cosine of u times du over 2x. And now you can notice that, look, this x and this x cancel out. The 2 is on the bottom, so I can rewrite this as 1 half times the integral of cosine u du. If you look at the inside part and you notice that its derivative is hanging out in the expression as well, or something like its derivative, you know, uh, you know, maybe without the constant. That's good news. That means that your u-substitution problem will likely work. Uh, the antiderivative of cosine is sine, so we have one-half sine of u plus c, and then finally one-half sine of x squared plus c is my final uh, answer to that indefinite integral. All right, let's do a, a definite integral. Let's do this one. Um, so we first of all we have an inside portion to the square root 2y plus 1 is inside so I'm going to make that my u. u is 2y plus 1. Um, and uh, so I'm going to start rewriting this. I'm going to draw my integral sign. I'm going to have the square root of u which by the way is u to the 1 half. Uh, for dy I can take du is 2 dy divide by 2 
dy is du over 2. Just like that. So a fairly easy problem. Um, the catch is, if you want to do this integral, you need limits of integration. And you have to, these are my y limits. You have to switch from y limits to u limits. So I'm going to take this relationship right here, u equals 2y plus 1. And I'm going to say, okay, if y is 0, then u equals something. And if y equals 3, then u equals something else. So I'm going to say, let's put 0 in here. 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1. And then if y is 3, 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So my u limits of integration are 1 to 7. And so now I can start my problem. Uh, we're going to have, this is a, 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 an exponent, so we're going to have 1 half u to the 3 halves over 3 halves evaluated from 1 to 7. That's really the 2 times 1 and a half is 3 on the bottom. 1 third u to the 3 halves from 1 to 7 will yield one third, seven to the three halves minus one to the three halves. And now you're just adding arithmetic. Um, so we're gonna have uh, one third, uh, this is gonna be uh, the square root of 343 minus one. It's not gonna come out to be a nice number, but we're just gonna leave it like this. Uh, anyway, uh, that is how you um, would follow through with a definite integral where you have limits of integration. Uh, there is another option um, where you could take this, uh, this as an indefinite integral, replace the, the y, the 2y plus 1 in, and then at the very end evaluate it with y limits. In my opinion, that's an extra step. It's much more clean to just go to u and never look back. Um, there's much fewer opportunities for mistakes. Like I said, just convert to U's, convert the limits to U limits, and then just roll on from there and get your, your answer here as we did, and, uh, and we're done with that. I'm going to try one more similar to that. So a, uh, another definite integral, uh, we're going to make u with minus r squared. du is minus 2r dr, and therefore dr is du over negative 2r. I'm going to kind of box this in, box this in. These are the things I'm about to use. Uh, we're going to have the integral uh, r over square root of u, dr is du over minus 2r. The r's can cancel out uh, noticeably. Um, so we used to have r limits. I'm going to go to u limits. So we're going to say if you put in 0 for r, you get 1 minus uh, 0 squared. That makes 1. And if you put in 1 for r, you get 1 minus 1 squared which is zero. So we're integrating this from one to zero. That's kind of interesting, um, but uh, you know, certainly just fine. Uh, so we have negative one half integral from one to zero of u to the one half du. It's gonna be minus one half uh, u to the three halves over three halves from one to zero. And that will be minus one half times um, uh, zero over three halves minus uh, one over three halves. And now we're back to just simple arithmetic minus one half times minus two thirds equals one third. So that is my limit. I'm sorry, that's my 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 uh, definite integral. 
uh, in this case, again, with U substitution and again by going from R limits to U limits. The fact that these are reversed is a complete coincidence. Uh, there's no sort of, you know, the, the new limits can be anything. Okay. Let's look at, look at this. Um, so sometimes it gets a little bit more uh, uh, difficult to decide what is the correct choice for you. Uh, the thing that jumps out at me real quick is that 2t plus 1 is the inside and the inside position here. Um, but that actually is not going to help me because if I picked u as 2t plus 1 and du is 2dt, it's not going to help me kind of get rid of the sine and the cosine squared. So I'm going to actually pick u to be cosine of 2t plus 1. Um, and uh, then du is negative sine 2t plus 1 times 2 times dt. And then finally dt is going to be du over minus 2 sine of 2t plus 1. I'll box this for now. Box that for now. Um, and we're going to start plugging things in, but, but think about what I've done here. I've, I noticed that the derivative of cosine involved the sine, so hopefully they'll cancel out. Also, I've noticed that this one was squared. And if you have a u squared somewhere, the integral of anything with a power is really easy. You get to use the backwards power rule, and it works out really nice. Um, so anytime you can convert something that looks hard to something with a, a u with a square, that's probably a good option for you to pick. So du, we have negative 2, sine of 2t plus 1, all that kind of in there. And now we're ready to start slashing uh, the signs out. Those can go. Uh, I'm going to rewrite this as minus one half on the outside and u to the minus two as my power. And now this is a really easy integral. Um, like I said, the strategy is if you see a big power or any power, try and think about using whatever is raised to that power as your u. This is now negative one half u to the minus one over minus one. And that's going to be positive 1 over 2u plus c, which is 1 over 2 times u, that's this, plus c. All right. Uh, following the same uh, strain, uh, the train of uh, thought, uh, I'm looking at things with a power of, oh, a power of 8 and a power of 2. Um, this time it's just an x inside, so we don't have that red herring of, you know, maybe we should pick what's inside the parentheses. Uh, that's not an issue here. Um, think in terms of what derivative would be easy to cancel out. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. And I look over here and I see, oh, there's a secant squared there. That seems convenient. If you pick secant, the derivative of secant is secant tangent, and yes, you could maybe cancel out one of the tangents, but you'd have eight, seven more to deal with. So I'm thinking here, u being a tangent is a good option, because du is secant squared, and then dx is, sorry, that's an x right there. 
du over secant squared x. So you can come over here and suddenly this becomes an u to the eighth. That's still secant squared x. And dx is now du over secant squared x. These can go and suddenly we have u to the eighth du, which is a very easy problem. That's u to the ninth over nine plus c. And u is now tangent to the ninth of x.